Are we recording? Are we recording? Yes. Welcome back to uh, the third week of RPG a day for this year, 2022. So uh, let's dive into the questions. First of all, uh, I'll I'll redo the answer, uh, or rather the question number 14, because uh, one of my viewer, Al Lucky7, uh, kind of mentioned something, and I kind of agree with him that my answer for question 14 was kind of a cop out, and I might give it a try, and that would be probably more positive in the end. So uh, the question in uh, for this, uh, this this number fourteen, uh, it was uh, trying to tag friends and uh, suggest a new RPG to try. Um, I have I haven't bought new games recently, uh, except the the old classics. So um, I would say to all uh, all of you watching this video now, just to play GURPS, <laughs> just try it. God damn it! It's three D six roll under, and the rest is optional. So if you don't like toolkits, it's fine. If you don't like this 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 three D six mechanic, it's fine. But to me, at least, in my eyes, what can you ask for more than a game that gives you everything and that you can modify to your taste? I, <laughs> it's like the ultimate gift. <laughs> I never understood the, 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 the mentality where you need to have a specific game design for this exact precise type of team and genre and iota of i don't understand that it's better to have a, a box full of legos and just build something in my view so there you go this is my answer for day 14. so day 15 uh, and by the way, this is my second attempt at doing this, uh, these questions. Uh, the first time I realized that some of my answers were not as positive and trying in to keep with the, uh, the theme that, that we are, have, have been set by the RPG the creators. I'm trying uh, my best now to, to be a more positive person, uh, which uh, probably is kind of hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, day fifteen. Who would you like to game master for you? Uh, I will pick a name this year. That would be Carl Sagan, because uh, the man had a uh, a really suiting voice. Was kind of knowledgeable, uh, even though he was an astrophysicist. Uh, he wrote uh, the story Contact, which was made more popular uh, with the Jodie Foster movie. Uh, so if he was kind of knowledgeable of the universe and, and such, and that would be fun to play with this guy, and, and he had a beautiful voice, so why not? Uh, number 16, what would be your perfect game? Well, uh, the perfect gaming session would be probably a session, a solo session, me with a, one game master. Uh, I've realized with my other answers, I, I kind of went into this crazy tangent about it was very like a, a uh, therapy couch <laughs> kind of an answer. So I will answer uh, a better one. A better answer would be a solo session, me and one game master only. That would be the best kind of game session. Rule rules wise, uh, the perfect game for me would probably be the um, uh, the age, modern age, fantasy age rule system as a basis. Uh, 
um, which uses a 3d6. Uh, this game would need to do kids on bikes as well as cosmic being and equally well. Uh, if I want to play a Sandman type of character or a Stranger Thing kind of adventure, they should. This game should do the trick. Um, I should. I should be able to use this this uh, hypothetical uh, hypothetical game uh, in any setting, any time period, any style or genre. So uh, thus, this game is de facto a toolkit. Uh, is it GURPS? Probably not, because GURPS has uh, a flaw when you go up the power uh, level scale. Mutants and Mastermind is a closer uh, game that can does everything right. Uh, this game has a uh, hero system, a style... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, this game has a hero point system. Uh, the hero system kind of uh, does that as well, but it's kind of clunky uh, with initiative and speed. And uh, yeah, th this this perfect game would have a hero point, style point, or bennies type of thing. Uh, it would have a skill list resembling that of uh, Big Eye Small Mouth thir third edition or second edition. The skill list was is just like perfect for me. Because it's a broad skill list, but when you choose a skill, you can have a uh, specialization in it. So this allowed this broad skill list to become very granular, but for a specific character or for a specific skill, which I like. And the old um, storyteller system did that as well. And finally, this game would need to be easy to prep such as uh, the Cypher system, Marvel Superhero, and uh, Savage World, which are all games that you can prep in five minutes. Uh, question 17. Uh, let's see. Past, present, or future? When is your favorite game set? So the best of times is all of times and space. So all of it. Uh, question 18. Where is your favorite place to play? Uh, not in that track. Uh, it's my home, obviously. I'm comfortable here and all set up for gaming. But uh, there's an honorable mention, which I call Remy's Barn. Uh, my friend uh, Remy, back in the day, was my first game master. Uh, I myself start started in this hobby by being the game master. I had two campaigns under the belt when Remy came into my my, my friend circles and um, he was my first DM for advanced d and second edition and we played in his old country house uh, with um, this this house was so old the, uh, the floor was made of uh, floorboards and with which squeak and, and creaked every time we walk into the the, the hole it had a, s a specific smell but of course uh, we played in his bedroom and uh, the smell was not so great <laughs> but uh, after a while he moved his operation in the barn the very very old barn in his backyard which had a like a second floor we had to crawl up there via a uh, wood uh, a wood ladder and it was kind of crazy it was one of those stranger things place to play D&D with an old carpet an old sofa an old chair which Remy used to DM in it, it had an old stereo with pump music throughout the session and it was a magical place uh, it was uh, damn hot in the summer but it was a very cool place to to have uh, some rpgs uh, rpg session with friends it was a beautiful place <laughs> probably smelly and dingy and but it was a cool place it, it struck my imagination 
So uh, question 19, uh, why has your favorite game stayed with you? Um, I will not answer the question from the angle of my favorite game, but rather my favorite games. Uh, so if I name a few, GURPS, Mutants and Mastermind, Palladium Books, uh, Games, and Marvel Superheroes, uh, Savage Worlds, these are all games that are my favorite because of various reasons. But they stayed with me because when I return to them, I don't have to relearn them or reread them or uh, read one of my famous cheat sheet to, to remember the system in a heartbeat. No, these games I just don't need to relearn. I just sit and play. So the, the, these why these games have stayed with me. And, um, and also because I'm a bit of a collector when I ponder, uh, when, when I ponder about RPGs, uh, I like to have my my shelves full of books, and, and then I can research topics and, and, and mechanics, and so I'm a bit of a collector that way. Uh, question twenty: How long do, does your game last? Uh, about four hours, but in my natural habitat, without children. Uh, that would be a whole day affair with uh, some kind of brunch in the morning and, 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 and stop the game when we're very tired at the end of the next day, probably around midnight. So maybe eight hours. And uh, finally, question 21, uh, share an intriguing detail from a game setting you enjoy. So I'm going to pulled out this book, Freedom City uh, Setting for Mutants and Mastermind. It's kind of a super uh, city full of supers. Uh, there are several, several tons of Easter eggs in this uh, setting, such as the uh, Kirby's Museum of Fine Arts for Jack Kirby, the, one of my favorite illustrator. You have a, um, a place called Stan's Superheroes, uh, if I can find it, yeah, Star Stan's Superheroes, stands for Stan Lee, of course. Stan's is a local chain of sandwich shops known for reasonable prices and large portion. The various sandwiches are named for different heroes and the stores have a number of autographed pictures of famous superheroes on its wall. With a three days notice, Stans can produce a 12-foot gigantosaur sub for parties. <laughs> so it's kind of, a, kind of fun little details. But the, the, the real detail I would answer this question with is this. This is a list called the tem, uh, Top 20 Wealthiest Fredonian. And on this list you have uh, 20 names of the richest people in Freedom City. There are two names in this list that kind of make me smile. First, the number two on the list, which is a media mogul, which share the same family name as me, Henry Alar. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And on number 14 on that list is a name, uh, is a man called Wayne Clark. Wink, wink. He's a publisher. And if we read what's going on with, uh, with, with this guy, Wayne Clark, the owner, the owner of one of the major American book publishers, Mr. Clark, has moved the main offices of Clark and Co. publishers to Freedom City and currently live in North Bay. He is friends with Henry Allard <laughs> and are, there are plans for a media tie-in between Allard's New Horizon Media and Clark and Co. At the age of 44, 
Clark has been married with his wife, Rose, for 29 years, and they have two children, Amanda, age 26, and Christopher, Kit, age 22, and a grad student at Harvard University in Boston. So it's kind of funny that a guy named Wayne Clark, or Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, obviously, is friend with a guy named Henry Ellard, which I share a uh, family name with. But there is another thing on this table, which is very, very cool. The number one spot on this list, which is the who is the richest person in Freedom City, as well as number 10 and number 20 on that list, is reserved for player character or GM created characters. So in Freedom City, you can be the richest man around. And this is a great, 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 great details about this, this, this setting. It really screams customization. It's obviously a choice made to make this setting yours. And that is beautiful. And not enough companies does that. I know to have, uh, to, to have played uh, Paizo's uh, Adventure Path for, uh, for a, a long time. I know that their universe were built at the beginning with this framework of Golarion needs heroes that everything was up into the air in this setting and only player character could feel could fill that niche and do the big thing in the setting so it's kind of another example of that and this is beautiful so uh, to all uh, setting creators out there when you create a setting leave blank space for game master and trucks to interrupt when uh, <laughs> when you're speaking so uh, that was my uh, my my answers for uh, this third week so uh, thank you for watching and see you later